Hey everybody, this is Matt from Walker Armory. Just wanted to bring you a video today showing you how to do a simple color fill on uh, any of your guns. Going to be showing you a couple that I've done. My AR-15, my XDM 9mm, uh, my wife's Smith & Wesson Model 908. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to do this uh, here on my shotgun. This is my uh, Remington 870. And uh, just right here on the side, it's just got a very basic, simple Remington 870. I'm just going to fill that in for you quick and easy, kind of give you a step-by-step walkthrough and show you how I do this. And I uh, hope this helps you guys. Hope you enjoy. Alright, so real quick before we get started, I wanted to show you a couple of the guns that I've done before and some color choices that I used um, and just really how to make it your own personal gun. Give it, uh, give it its own characterization, you know, its own personality, um, and just kind of make it a little bit different than everybody else's. How to really make it your gun. Uh, this is the AR-15 that I've built, um, and then I, I uh, color filled this in. I used the spikes lower, as you can see, with the uh, the logo down there, and then uh, also filled in the colors here um, for the uh, safe, single, and uh, full auto or burst setting, you know. Um, this was actually one of the hardest ones that I've done uh, with this here, and you'll see that in a little bit. Uh, as I kind of explain this um, and the process of doing this. This is my Springfield XDM 9mm and uh, I filled it in here. Um, you can see the, uh, the Springfield logo on the top and then also here on the side with the Springfield Armory and the XDM. Uh, also I filled in the grips. This is my wife's Smith & Wesson model 908. Uh, this was her Christmas present this year and I painted these grips for her. Um, and uh, I'll kind of show you a little bit uh, what I did differently for the for for this rather than uh, what I did for those guns. Um, but I did the grip here, and uh, again here on the other side. And uh, those are pretty detailed, kind of intricate. And I'll show you a little bit uh, how to do that. I know uh, it's going to be hard to show those um, on the video with the camera, so I'm going to put some still photos uh, into the video to kind of show you a close up and uh, how that all works. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started uh, getting some color onto your gun. This is pretty much everything you're going to need right here. I'll give you a kind of a basic walkthrough of uh, kind of what it is and what we're going to use it for. Um, we're going to start off with some uh, rubbing alcohol. This is some 91% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to use this to clean the gun. Um, just the, you know, you don't have to clean the whole gun. Just the spot where you're going to paint. You're going to take everything off, um, all the, the dirt, the grime, all the leftover cleaning oil, all the oil off of your fingers, everything. Just wipe it clean. Um, and after we do that, we're going to use these gloves. Uh, you know, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Uh, make sure we don't get any more oil off of our fingers back into those grooves. Otherwise, the finish just isn't going to last. Um, and for all my wiping and everything and cleaning, I use uh, these synthetic pads uh, just because they don't leave any lint on my gun. Um, when you're wiping everything off, you know, it can get a little sticky. Um, that way, you know, you're not left with a little fuzzy sitting down in your groove. Uh, I'm going to use some Hoppies number 9 uh, gun, gun solvent. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to use that for later. Uh, I got some of these, these little uh, pipe things, uh, suction, I don't know, back in the, the pharmacy section of Walmart. Uh, they're like 88 cents for a pack of four. Use these to uh, I'm gonna move the uh, paint and thinner and everything into my art tray. Again, from Walmart for like 88 cents uh, back in the arts and crafts section. I don't even bother cleaning it out. There's a ton of little holes and stuff to mix everything. And uh, again, super cheap. We're going to get some uh, toothpicks here. Uh, we're going to use the toothpicks to actually apply the paint down into the groups. Um, and then we're going to need the actual paint. Um, and there's two different ways. Well, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that I've seen to do this. The two that I've used and have found uh, that work really well um, is the, uh, the testers enamel. Um, this is what I did for my AR-15. 
um, and my Springfield XDM, and this is what I'm going to do today for my uh, my Remington A70. Um, these are the uh, the colors that I've used. Uh, this is a blue metallic flake. Uh, that's the blue and the spider, the AR-15. All the red is a stoplight red metallic. Um, this is uh, what I'm going to put in the Remington 870, and this is the German silver metallic. Uh, that's actually what the Springfield XDM and the AR-15 are. Uh, all the white sections is actually a German silver metallic. I actually really just like the metallic flake. Kind of gives it a little bit extra shine in the sun. Um, and just a quick tip, this is a flat black, again from testers. If you nick your gun, scratch it at all, not, I mean you're not going to do a painting hopefully. Uh, this usually matches the finish pretty good. Um, you can cover up a lot of mistakes. And then we're going to need a bottle of uh, enamel paint thinner. Um, so that's uh, that's what I typically use. This is what we're going to use today is the uh, the testers. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, on my wife's uh, you know Smith & Wesson Model 908 here, on the grips, when I did the grip here and here, um, I actually used uh, fingernail polish. It's a girl's gun. It's got to be pink. You know, might as well use fingernail polish. Um, for the paint, I actually put a little bit of thinner, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, for the fingernail polish, I actually just went straight polish, I didn't thin it out or anything. And then instead of the thinner or the hoppies um, to wipe it down, um, I actually used a nail polish remover. Uh, if you do decide to go with uh, fingernail polish of any color, what it, you know, whatever, uh, when you wipe it down, um, you'll see what I'm talking about later, use a non-acetone fingernail polish. Uh, the acetone can wipe the finish off of your gun along with the paint. Uh, so make sure you get a non-acetone and always test it in a small, you know, inconspicuous area. Make sure you're not going to damage anything. Um, you know, the grips there are plastic. It worked out fine. Um, I actually did it on the paint. Uh, the roll marks were a little bit shallow, so I was kind of getting some inconsistent, uh, you know, it was uh, sitting deep in some areas and pulling everything out in the shallow areas. Uh, so I actually just ended up doing the grips on there. But again, you know, make sure it's a non-acetone and uh, check to make sure if it works. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll get everything cleared out and we'll get the, uh, the 870 up here set up and uh, we'll start from there. All right, so now that we have everything here, we're gonna go ahead and start and uh, we're gonna start by cleaning it. Uh, but first things first, we're gonna verify that the shotgun is actually unloaded and we've got the uh, chamber empty here and the magazine tube is empty. So, like I said, we're gonna use uh, some gloves here because the first part is uh, cleaning and we're gonna use some 91% rubbing alcohol. And uh, basically we're just gonna give it a good wipe down. Just pull all that dirt, that grime, the extra powder from the last shooting, um, any extra oils that are left on from the last cleaning. Um, everything we're gonna pull out of that because any, uh, any oils and stuff that get underneath the paint, between the paint and the gun, uh, your finish isn't gonna last nearly as long. So we're gonna go ahead and do this the right way, wear some gloves, uh, keep all the oil off of our hands out of there. And uh, just nice and simple. Gonna just get some alcohol and one of these little rubbing pads. It doesn't take much. And I'm just gonna take. I'm just gonna rub out that uh, Remington 870 roll mark right there. I'm just gonna make sure it's good and good and clean. That we're not gonna pick anything up. The pad might get a little bit of a yellow in it. Uh, that's all the dirt and the oil, everything coming out of there. We're just gonna keep going. Uh, make sure we get all everything down in there and uh, pull everything out and then we're just going to give it a little bit of time to dry. It doesn't take long. Uh, the 91% uh, alcohol, that's going to evaporate pretty quickly. Uh, so we're just going to let that uh, dry out really quick and uh, we'll go get some paint, mix that up. I'll show you how I mix up the paint and uh, we'll start throwing it in there see how it looks like. Alright, so now that we've got the gun cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and mix up some of our paints. And uh, like I said, what we're going to use, this is uh, some testers enamel. I actually got this online. You can get this at a Hobby Lobby, anything like that. Um, word to the wise, if you buy testers enamel online, uh, computer screen color is very different than what the actual color comes as. Um, I actually bought a bunch of different colors online, and this is the only one I ended up liking. And this is the German Silver Metallic. And this is what we're going to be putting in uh, the Remington 870 roll mark. And uh, like I said, or you can get this at Hobby Lobby. Um, a little bit easier there if you can find some colors there that you like just off the shelf. That way you can kind of see what it looks like uh, before you walk home with it. Anyways, the way we're going to do this is I've got uh, my art tray, my uh, palette set up here. And uh, what I'm going to use are these little suction cups. You see I've got a little bit of paint left in here from the last time I never cleaned it. Uh, but you're just going to make sure that your paint is mixed up. Make sure uh, everything in there is good and uh, 
mixed together, especially with the metallic stuff, you're going to want to make sure all that metallic uh, coloring is mixed in there really well. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little suction bulb and I'm just going to suck up just a bit of paint. And it's not going to take much paint at all. So I'm just going to pull a little blob down in there and then squirt the rest back out here in the bottle that I don't need. And I'm going to set this off to the side. And then with the enamel paint, like I was saying, we're going to use some uh, enamel thinner, some testers enamel thinner. And again, you can get this from like a Hobby Lobby, anything like that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thin this paint out just a little bit, just to help it kind of roll down into those grooves. Um, and you'll kind of see why we're going to need that process a little bit later. Uh, but just to help it kind of flow, uh, you really just want the paint to flow. When I did it with the... Um, uh, with the nail polish, I actually didn't thin it out at all. It was actually already a pretty thin paint, um, and it, it uh, flowed down into those grooves pretty well. And if you look at the uh, the detail, especially of the Smith & Wesson logo like I did on those grips there, that's a pretty intricate and uh, pretty tight detail, um, and it flowed through there pretty well. Um, this, the Remington 870 logo, is not very, uh, or that roll mark isn't very deep, or I mean it is very deep, it's very pronounced, there's nothing, you know, so it doesn't need to be thinned out a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and add just a couple of drops of thinner, uh, just in case, and uh, just to give it a little bit extra and kind of show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull off this little cap here, and then, uh, you know, another little clean suction pipe thing. And basically, not very much at all. When I did a bunch of it for like the spider on my AR-15, I used three drops. This isn't very, uh, you know, we don't, we're not going to need to thin this very much. I'm not using very much paint. I'm going to put uh, one, I'll give it two drops. And uh, it's just kind of a trial and error to see how it flows for you. You know, it's, it's really just personal preference. Uh, the more thinner you use, the longer it's going to take to dry. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cap this back up. And then I'm just going to take another one of our little toothpicks here and I'm just going to mix this up really well. And just make sure that thinner gets all down in there really good and uh, mix very evenly throughout the paint. Alright, and this is actually thinning out uh, quite a bit. Uh, so hopefully this doesn't get too thin on us. I didn't use very much paint. Uh, this is not exactly a permanent um, process. This is about as permanent as you can get, I guess. But uh, you know, if you do mess up, no worries. Um, I'll show you, you can use some Hoppies number nine. That's what we're gonna wipe this off with, that Hoppies gun solvent or some CLP something. And a little toothpick, you can just pick it right back out of there. If you don't like it, if you don't like the color, um, I actually tried a bunch of different colors uh, when I was experimenting with this and learning how to do this, mix it up a bunch. So if this doesn't work, you know, we can always pull it back out, try again, you know, make, try different mixtures, see what works the best, uh, see what looks the best and we'll, uh, just like I said, it's not not exactly a permanent, but you know, when you go to clean your guns afterwards, um, you're not going to want to douse the area. But once it's dried and cured, uh, this paint supposedly I think I read that it takes like two days for it to fully cure. So once you do this, you're not going to want to take it to the range and sling all this stuff off. Um, you know, let it go sit up in your gun cabinet for a couple of days and uh, cure. Make sure it gets set up really good. So I'm going to set that there, and then we're going to bring the gun in, and we're going to go ahead and show you how. I'm going to show you how to uh, go ahead and apply that paint down into those grooves. Alright, hopefully I'll be able to do this here with the camera angle uh, to where I can actually show you this, uh, what it looks like without screwing this up. Uh, this is kind of an awkward thing, trying to I'm actually reaching around the camera, standing up behind it. So, to apply this, um, I'm going to go ahead and mix this up just a little bit more, make sure everything you know thins out, that nothing uh, gets separated in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take just a little dot. And if you look at the end of that, there's just a little dot of paint right there. And I'm actually left-handed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from left to right so I don't smear this as I'm coming across it. But I'm uh, going to take a little bitty dot. Just get a little dot set up there. And right there on that zero, I'm just going to push it down in there and just let it flow. 
Don't worry about getting some extra on there. We're going to wipe all that off. Don't go crazy with it, but make sure you get all that paint down in those grooves because that's what we're going to do. We're going to fill in all of these, these roll marks, all these grooves, and then we're going to take and wipe off the excess paint off the top once this dries a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and set this up and just set it in there. Let that paint flow all the way down in there. Now watch, I'm kind of stabbing it a little bit just to make sure you're getting all that down in there. Make sure it gets down in there deep. Hopefully we'll be able to get this done with one coat if you do this right. Um, again, like I said, this is why I'm kind of thinning the paint out a little bit is to kind of help it flow and you'll watch. I can touch it there and it'll just flow all the way through the through the entire design. So that's what we're going for right there. Maybe a little bit more down here at the bottom of the O and just let it flow through. So we'll start here on the end on the Remington. And I'm just going to touch these areas with that little dot and just help all that paint get get all the way down in there. And it's not a real precise, it doesn't have to be a you know, super precision thing. You're not actually painting this in there by hand. But uh, you're going to have a little bit of extra paint on top, not a problem. We're just going to come back later. I'm going to let this dry up for 20-30 minutes. Let it get a good film on it. Um, not so much that you won't be able to get this off, but not too little that when we go back to wipe this off, we don't bring it out from, you know, from the bottom too. Otherwise, we will have to go back with another coat. I'm just gonna set this up. I'm not going crazy with it, not too much, not too little. It's really just kind of a trial and error. Like I said, if you do mess up, no worries. We can come back, we can wipe it all off, we'll start again, try again, again. That dot of that little eye right there, not very deep. I'm gonna make sure I get a little bit of extra in there, make sure it all gets down in there. So I don't want that out later. And again, this is the German metallic silver color that I'm applying in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera or not, but uh, it's actually got a little bit of a you know a little bit of a sparkle. It kind of looks white, you know, um, just like inside. Uh, almost like a little dirty white and uh, I mean it's a silver so that's what it is uh, during the daylight it's really gonna reflect stand out and it, uh, it looks pretty awesome make sure I get everything down here in the bottom of this R just make sure everything gets rolled through Make sure we get a nice good flow all the way through our pattern. So that's everything there. Maybe a little bit more down here at the O. I can kind of see a little bit of an indentation. Um, actually where the paint is going through and then the top paint is kind of you know, tacky up a little bit above it. So I'm going to go ahead and just add it a little bit more. Make sure we're filling all those spaces in. You know, sometimes you kind of see I connected that seven and that zero right there. Sometimes it actually does kind of help to connect the paint. You know, it's got a little bit of surface tension on it. Um, and so what I actually did there is to just kind of connect it, let all the excess. And again, you know, I've, I've been saying this a lot how it flows, but you can, you really don't uh, don't know it until you do it. I guess you know everything's connected like that, and uh, that just gives it a little bit. We're gonna put a dot there. And that dot is just going to disperse out. So if everything's connected kind of a little bit like that, that's going to give that dot a little bit to go. It's going to break all that surface tension. Uh, everything's going to be flat on the top, and hopefully everything's going to flow down into those uh, into those grooves where they need to be. Alrighty. That looks good there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let that dry up. 
Um, I'm going to give it uh, about 30-45 minutes and uh, we'll come back and take a look at it and see what it looks like then. Alright everybody, I've had this paint sitting on here for about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, it's dried up uh, pretty tacky up here up on top. And uh, so what we're going to do now is just go ahead and remove all this excess paint. We're just going to leave, we're going to try and leave everything down inside that roll mark, down inside that engraving and everything. And we're just going to take and uh, very, very gently wipe away everything off the top and uh, just leave the Remington 870 roll mark underneath. Um, this is kind of the tricky part. Uh, very little, uh, little pressure you need to do. It's just very, I mean, just very little, just nice and smooth. Take it nice and easy. Um, and we're going to roll that off. I'll show you. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of discoloration here on the metal. Don't worry about that. That's all uh, from the alcohol actually pulling off all the dirt and grime and the oils and stuff that I had on there. Uh, so that's fine once we uh, put some, some of this gun solvent on here. Um, and again, I'm just using this, uh, this Hoppy's, uh, Hoppy's gun solvent here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dip my rack down in there. Just get a little bit on there. Doesn't take much. And uh, just need a little bit of solvent. Right, and then just one finger, very light, light pressure. I'm just going to take and just, just basically just very lightly start to rub it off. I'm barely even touching. I don't want to pull up that paint underneath. But just barely touch it and just let it roll over. You can kind of see how it's starting to get wet. If you look at the rag, I'm actually pulling up a little bit of paint right there. Not the black stuff that's from the bottle, but that little silver patch right there. That's all paint that's just starting to come up. And uh, it's starting to be more pronounced. So it's very gently. Alright. So you can see uh, that little spot of paint right there that's been coming up. And you can kind of see it's starting to, that 870 is starting to come out a little bit. Starting to notice that a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get a clean corner here. That's a lot of solution. I don't get that much. Let's squeeze some of that down here. Don't need don't need a whole lot, just a little bit of moistness just to just to barely peel that paint off. And I'm just going to get a fresh corner and just very lightly barely barely touching it. It's all just a Again, this is kind of a trial and error thing, and it's just going to take some time. We're just going to pull it out nice and slow like this. Alright, got a lot on there. I don't want to pull out everything, so I'm going to do a clean pad here. Kind of mop up some of this excess gun solvent that's on there and try and pull off everything we can. You can kind of see it coming out there. There it is. You see it start pulling through. You got a little bit here over the R, a little bit over the 870. Right, I'm going to get uh, this one here with a lot more solvent on it. I'm going to give it another good wipe down over here. And just let the rag do all the work, let the solvent do the work, let it pull it up. You don't have to scrub it down, just keep wiping. Just nice, smooth, very little pressure. You don't want to get down in those grooves. You just want to peel off whatever's on top. That paint down in there is not, not cured yet, so it'll still come out. That's why it's still coming off here. So you just really, you can't press down into the grooves is the biggest thing. So we're just, just sliding right across the top of the surface. You see a little bit more of it coming out. It's almost done. Got a little bit there over the zero and the seven. A little bit over the R. Starting to look good. I'm going to a little bit more of this rag with uh, some solvent on it. Get a little bit more right here. And a little bit more right here over the seven and the zero. 
we're just pulling that paint right off the surface leaving everything down in there down in those grooves we're just going to leave it all there there you go all right now i'm going to get a clean rag i'm just going to start wiping this off start wiping all this excess off there we go all right let's get one more clean rag here bring all this off you can kind of see there's a little bit of glitter up here that's not a problem after all this sits in there and cures then we can come back a little bit later and scrub off all this extra for real good um, pull everything off the surface and uh, just make sure it gets you know, it gets good and clean again once this is cured it's a m way more permanent finish uh, you still don't want to come down in here and scrub it on it but yeah, this is starting to look really nice again just real smooth pressure I'm just wiping all this clean just spreading this out wipe off some of the extra up here wipe off all this extra don't need that all right so I'm just gonna leave this here I'm gonna go set this back in the closet for a couple days and it will uh, it'll drop it'll cure we're gonna have a permanent finish right there of uh, Remington 870 looks really good again that's the uh, German metallic silver that color right there but uh, yeah that ended up turning out pretty good well there you go, you got a, a quick simple color fill on the Remington 870, turned out really well, uh, I like it. Um, this is uh, again the testers enamel paint that we used for this and uh, Tester says on their website that uh, their enamel takes 48 hours to cure properly. Uh, so this is going to go sit in the closet for a good two or three days and then after that uh, won't be worried about taking out the range, go shooting. Uh, should have no problems with it. So I hope I taught you guys a little bit more of uh, kind of the process uh, that I use um, of uh, painting up your guns and uh, hope you can get out there and get your own paints and uh, customize your own guns make them unique for yourself and uh, if you like the video give us a thumbs up comment subscribe to our channel and uh, stay safe we'll see you next time